what, what we have here is a uh, cedar finish door and or a cedar door, garage door, and we are going to refinish it with Sickens. Uh, Sickens is a uh, moisture permeable urethane. What we're going to do is we are going to bleach wash this door. We're going to use a mild 5 to 10% bleach solution to get the mildew and stuff off the door. Now, so we've got some water here. A little bit of bleach, probably about 5% right there. Tiny bit of uh, dishwashing liquid. Sponge. Doing this rather than pressure washing because pressure washing often damages surfaces and nothing gets, nothing gets something as clean as uh, actually physically washing it. It's the difference between running a dish under hot water or washing it or physically washing that dish. And I like to have a nice clean mildew free surface to work on so I can actually see what I'm looking at prior to also. Okay, so when we come back to you, this will have been washed and dried and rinsed off. It's going to be washed and rinsed off and then dried, and then we will start our sanding. We'll pick up from there. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're back. Uh, what we went out, we washed the doors. We got all, all the uh, as much mildew as we could off with uh, the mild bleach solution. Uh, after we uh, washed them, we took that we took a uh, soft hose and we rinsed the doors off. They've been drying for two to three hours now, and now we're going to go ahead and get them prepared for our first coat of the 2-3. What we're going to do first, though, is we are going to go ahead and put some blue tape on our edges of our doors here on the painted edge in order that we don't get any varnish on that. Now, what we have done in order to, uh, that we can control these doors manually and work with them easier is if you see that handle inside on the red, uh, the pulley on the red handle, uh, with the rope, just pull that down and that will disconnect the garage door from the assembly and will allow you to work the garage door manually. Uh, when it is time to re-engage the garage door, merely push the uh, door open button again, it will, the motor will cycle through its, uh, its cycle and uh, it will pick up the garage door and, and it's back on track. So, having said that, We are now going to put some uh, blue tape on the edges here. So take your blue tape and just run along the edge of the door here. No big deal. We like to use the blue tape because blue tape does not stick uh, like yellow tape does and doesn't peel up uh, any finishes that might be on it below, like the, like the tape below it, uh, good for faux finishes and stuff. Again, uh, 3M is our tape of choice. Uh, it is more expensive than others, but we believe it outperforms, outperforms others. And per, if you're going to get professional results, you want to use professional equipment. Uh, as painters, all the equipment that we buy is always top line equipment. Uh, personally, I always buy pretty brushes. Um, all the roller covers that we use are lambskin or sheep wool. Uh, they cost two to three times what uh, other roller co roller covers uh, cost, but they hold twice as much paint, last twice as long, and uh, give much better results. Don't rely on how what the can says or what the paint source says or how long this is going to last. This is going to last just as long as where you live, what climate you're in, how much sun you get, and how well you take care of it. So, if you allow moist, if you allow mildew and mold and dust and pollen to concentrate on these and set up shop, then your finish is going to last longer. If it's in more sun, uh, more direct sun, if you live in a state that has a lot of more direct sun than others, then it's not going to long as last as, last as long. So, it's just going to last as long as you take care of it and maintain it. So with this door, this door was done maybe a year ago. Uh, and this was a brand new installed garage door a year ago. Um, 
by Cowart Door here in Austin, Texas, uh, probably the uh, premier uh, uh, wooden garage door company in town and uh, as far as installing high-end garage doors. But because this door gets so much direct sun and it may be just be also because it's canopied by these trees and stuff, um, it is subject to a lot of sun wear and a lot of mildew. And so my recommendation for this door is that it be washed a couple times a year by hand with a mild solution. Uh, get your landscape person on that uh, or, uh, or yourself or whoever uh, is doing that for you. Uh, and again, it's just a 5 or 10, mild 10% bleach solution. You merely wash it down with a sponge and you rinse it back off. And then once a year, you're going to put a maintenance uh, coat on it. And if you will do that, then you can run these into perpetuity. Uh, if you do not, then uh, you will not. Okay. All that having been said, now we have our door. We have washed it with our bleach solution. We have taped our edges, and it is now clean and dry. And, and uh, you can see it's already significantly brighter. And so now we're going to prepare the surface for that uh, urethane. Now this door has been done uh, previously when it was manufactured with the coats of Ketol 1 and 2-3. So you can see it is a two components three coat system. CTOL 1 is your first coat. That's what they mean by 1. CTOL 2, 3 is your second and third coats here. The 1 is uh, almost more of a stain. Um, it has, uh, it's much more penetrative because it's uh, much uh, thinner. It doesn't have near the varnish, sticky uh, varnish-like quality. It's uh, much less viscous. Uh, like water, it doesn't have near the viscosity that this one has. And uh, so that's the one that goes on. And uh, the way it normally goes is that uh, the, we, you would put it on, you'd wait 24 hours. Uh, you come back, you very super lightly sponge sand the surface, you clean it again, you put on your second coat of 2-3 uh, or your first coat of 2-3, which is the second coat overall. Uh, this is uh, more of a varnish and uh, has more of the UV inhibitors in it and is designed to lay more up on top and protect this finish, protect the color in this one. And so this is the finish at that point that you'll be doing maintenance on and uh, taking care of in the future. Now, because these are tinted products, every time you put a coat of these on, you are slightly adding a, a slight veil, a tiny bit of color to the top coat. So they also make clear maintenance versions of these in order that if you are completely, if you've been maintaining your finish well, uh, and uh, you do not want to uh, make it any darker, you could put on a clear, ver uh, a clear version of one of these. So, and this is basically all the supplies that you're going to need. So let's, let's take a quick look at uh, basically what supplies we are using here. So we have um, bleach, just regular bleach and soap, and we were using and making about a 5 to 10 percent solution of this bleach. Um, just a dish soap of any kind here would do. Just a small squirt in there, and that's going to check uh, all the dirt and stuff off. Uh, we just use a sponge, a regular sponge to wash here. Uh, sponge sanders, uh, the fine to uh, the medium to fine is the one we're using. Couple and who, who makes those? Uh, this is 3M, and like like I said before, uh, there are many manufacturers, uh, but we believe that 3M uh, makes the best products out there. Uh, here is again uh, some uh, tape, blue tape, and of course you want some yellow masking tape just for uh, if you uh, just. You know, it's a good thing to have around. Uh, clean white rags. Uh, painters like clean white rags. We don't like synthetic rags. We don't like colored rags. We like clean, lint-free cotton rags. And uh, they're super important to us and super useful, and we're willing to pay for them. Uh, and you should be, too. Uh, a plastic bucket of any kind. This happens to be a uh, coffee container. Some mineral spirits. Uh, a couple of uh, other glass containers. And then uh, some disposable brushes. Uh, a couple of stir sticks, and so basically, let's look at how much money you're actually looking at for your supplies here. So this is probably three dollars, two dollars, three dollars. So that's five, eight. These run about three dollars a piece. Uh, you probably only need two of them. So that is thirteen. This is uh, probably five dollars a roll, three dollars a roll. So that's twenty-three. Uh, These run about. Uh, Gosh, I don't know, uh, $7 a bag maybe, uh, so 27 these are about 50 bucks a gallon, so 127 about 10 bucks, 137 uh, These are on a couple bucks a piece, so basically about $150 is what you see represented here um, and that it would cost to do the project here. And you're going to actually have some materials left over. Um, so go ahead, let's go ahead and start preparing our door here. Now you always want to sand with the grain. 
of what you've got going on. You don't want to sand across the grain because that's going to scratch the door. You always want to sand with the grain. Also important is you don't want to burn color off of these edges. That's easy to do. Uh, here in the middle, it's, you know, uh, you can just sand, sand along. And, but as you get to the edges here, you have to be careful because if you put too much pressure for too long on an edge, you can actually burn through the finish very easily and burn that color off. And what we want to do is always stand with the grain, okay? always stand just the way the door was built, and you just want to let your hand be your guide. Is that, is that smooth or not? Also, when you get to these edges like this and stuff, just a couple of really nice soft passes. And you can see how even just touching that, running it along the grain creates a stripe and a cut mark. So that's what you really want to avoid. So you want to be methodical about this and actually sand these exactly the way they were built. On each little plane, if you have a 45 here, just gently buff out that little 45. Same thing on the other side there, like that. And then we're going to do just as much as we can and just be as soft and easy on this door as possible. And that's, and, the, that's the fine grit uh, sponge uh, it's, it's the medium fine grit. The, uh, you'll find the sponge sanders uh, burn down uh, fairly quickly. They, uh, they, get, they get pretty smooth. But they also they stay effective for a long period of time. And so, and really just let your hand be your guide. Uh, you know, you can see stuff visually, but let your hand be your guide. So we're going to get this all sanded out. And then once we get it sanded like this, then we're going to uh, clean it. And so there's a couple ways to clean it. Uh, let me get right back over here if I could try for a sec. Uh, you can use a, uh, a dry brush if it has a lot of dust on it. And you can first dry brush it, dry brush a lot of stuff out. But ultimately, you're going to want to wipe it. And so you're going to want to use a dry to very, very slightly damp rag, not, not much water on it. And you can also use tack cloth if you like. And you're going to want to just wipe it gently, again, with the direction of the grain. And that's going to get it clean because you really want a clean, dust-free surface uh, in order to be putting this on. You want to be putting the varnish on the surface, not on top of a layer of surface of dust. And so what this does is this cleans the surface, uh, gets it ready to go. Uh, it uh, smooths the surface so that it's, uh, it is more pleasant to the touch. And it also puts millions of tiny little micro scratches in it, in what us painters call tooth. And so it makes the, uh, gives the varnish uh, millions of little micro scratches, gives it something to cling on to. Okay? So uh, why don't you guys take a break, and then we will come back. Uh, after we come back, we will have this door, uh, both doors actually, completely sanded, uh, dusted off like we talked about, wiped off after that, completely cleaned down, and then we'll go from there and we'll start uh, finishing. So we'll see you then. Thanks so much.